In a meeting at the Kremlin with Russia's Human Rights Council yesterday, Russian President Vladimir Putin said the threat of nuclear war is increasing, though he also noted that he views the weapons as a deterrent. Now, at the meeting, Putin was also quoted saying, as for the idea that Russia wouldn't use such weapons first under any circumstances, then it means we wouldn't be able, we wouldn't be the second to use them either, because the possibility to do so in case of an attack on our territory would be very limited. Nevertheless, we have a strategy, namely as a defense, we consider weapons of mass destruction nuclear weapons. It is all based around the so-called retaliatory strike, that is, when we are struck, we strike in response. Also, uh, in other news, a must-pass defense bill uh, negotiated in Congress. Actually, uh, it looks like this was a must-pass. And it did pass <laughs> 350 to 80. New sanctions would make it harder for Russian President Vladimir Putin to use gold to prop up the ruble. Uh, the defense bill sanctioning uh, any American entities that knowingly transact with or transport gold from Russia's central bank holdings, uh, just uh, among the uh, leverage that is being used right now uh, from Congress against Putin mm -hmm. because his um, difficulty in accessing money yep. and making money because he can't sell the, the oil that he was selling mm -hmm. or natural gas, and then uh, to be able even to conduct business, right. uh, that they're going after all those efforts. Yeah. And uh, meantime, Tucker Carlson over at Fox News taking aim at Ukraine's President Zelensky, happens to be Time Magazine's Man of the Year. Carlson making several accusations, calling Zelensky a, quote, dictator, and even slamming U.S. officials who have praised the Ukrainian leader for his handling of Putin's war. Uh, Carlson even went on to suggest that President Zelensky, an elected official, is not a fan of democracy. Here's what he said. Zelensky has no interest in freedom and democracy. In fact, Zelensky is far closer to Lenin than to George Washington. He is a dictator. He is a dangerous authoritarian who has used $100 billion in U.S. tax dollars to erect a one-party police state. He has sent soldiers into churches. Zelensky's secret police have raided monasteries across Ukraine, even a convent full of nuns, and arrested dozens of priests for no justifiable reason whatsoever and in clear violation of the Ukrainian constitution, which no longer matters. Yeah, Tom Basile uh, is here to help us sort all of that out, our Newsmax host of America Right Now. Uh, there are a lot of things that, that Tucker said that simply yeah. aren't true. So, yeah. so give us the facts. Well, first of all, here, here he goes again. He's, yeah. I don't understand why he keeps doing this. He knows already mm -hmm. that Putin uses what he says on the air as pro, uh, as, as pro Russian propaganda against the Ukrainians and against the United States. Now, what Tucker is doing, which is really, really unfortunate, and it's, it's, it's naive and it's, mis it's uninformed, is he's taking the, the, the values and the rights and the way that you run a country like a, like a peacetime republic like the United States, and he's imputing them to a wartime nation that is getting bombed into the 19th century. And it is not unusual for a government to, uh, to try to restrict ways that foreign governments can interfere and drive propaganda, particularly during wartime. And that's, that's a lot of what Zelensky has been doing. And I understand that it's, it looks like from the outside that it's, it's very, it's very heavy-handed. But he's not abolishing religion. He's not establishing a state-sponsored religion or something to that effect. Uh, but there, there is a problem, and Russia has been very good at this. They're very good at using propaganda to try and drive their, to drive their agenda. He's trying to mitigate that. Let, let's talk about the Ukrainian Orthodox Church. Yeah, right. Um, explain uh, what that is and how it is, and that it's, it, it's not. A church in the way we think of your local church that you go to that uh, hopefully stays out of the politics of the pulpit. Uh, this is kind of different. Yeah, well, there, there are two different patriarchates, right? There's one that is that is connected to Russia. That's the Moscow patriarchate. And then there's a Kiev patriarchate. What, what Zelensky is primarily concerned about are, are, are priests and, and church personnel that are connected to Russia, to the patriarch who, who is in Russia, who is a um, who is a, uh, a, a big fan of Vladimir Putin, who has called Vladimir Putin a miracle of God and has, has, has identified Ukrainians as being evil, as the evil opposition, trying to make sure that those churches are not 
a mouthpiece for Vladimir Putin. Even though it's called the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, correct? Right. There, there was a, there's been a, there was a, a schism. schism there. Yeah. But you have two different patriarchates, and you also have other Eastern churches, and you have Catholic, Catholic, uh, uh, Catholic churches as well in, um, in, in Ukraine. So there is this concern, and frankly, we're concerned about this here too. How often do we talk about the fact that we want to limit or mitigate any sort of um, foreign interference in our elections or in our public dialogue? Mm -hmm. We talk about that all of all the time. Apparently, Tucker Carlson has a problem with that uh, and with uh, with Vladimir Zelensky doing that in the middle of a war. Huh. And uh, aren't there also allegations of uh, propaganda being uh, created? By some of these people that have been taken into custody. Absolutely, and you know, but it, it, he goes on in this in this monologue to even criticize the, their military for creating social media videos that are meant to increase recruitment or to uh, you know to, to to boost morale. We do that here. Uh, we do that here all all the time. So again, he's throwing a lot of spaghetti against the wall, and and it does play into the hands. Of, uh, of the Russian dictator when, when somebody who has his kind of influence does that. And again, for the life of me, I can't figure out why he continues to, to take the wrong side here. And, and look, I know he's concerned about abuse, but that's going to that's gonna come. We're, we're going to see whether or not at the end of this war, hopefully Ukraine is, is successful and, those, and, and full rights and protections and free speech is restored, the Constitution is restored. But when you have a, when you have a wartime situation, um, there are. It is an exigent circumstance. And the, the one other thing that he also talked about was the amount of money. I mean, and a lot of people are looking at that Absolutely. and saying, you know what? We are giving tens of billions of dollars. He mentioned the the number a hundred million, a uh, hundred billion, which. I think a lot of people in our country are saying, okay, even if we're supporting you, we would like some accountability. Yeah, and, and you're, you're going to see come January, you're going to see a lot more Republicans on the Hill say, look, we're, we're not talking about pulling back aid, but we need to do a much better job, especially after our Iraq and Afghanistan experience of the last 20 years. Yeah. We need to do a much better job of accounting where this money is going and how it's being used. And uh, we know that what we are doing is being effective against the Russians, uh, but it's certainly not uh, an endless supply and we need to know where it's going. Uh, all right, we're going to have to leave it there. Tom Basili, thanks right. so much. Always great, great to, to have you. you with us. Thank you so much.